You picked a good one because you're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you from our outstanding studios as always. And you picked a good one because we have Frank Pollock, Bengals offensive line coach extraordinaire, breaking down the offensive line prospects. It is a deep draft at offensive tackle, a deep draft offensive line in general. We're talking not just early rounds, but there's prospects mid and late rounds and even probably college free agents. And if anybody can unearth them and develop them, it's Frank Pollock. And I mean, we go through at least a dozen, maybe more of the top offensive linemen and just a thumbnail scouting sketch of those guys that Frank Pollock gives us solid gold. Don't miss it. Tell your friends, Frank Pollock on the hoof. It's awesome. Well, did you make a smart move to join in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics in our unbelievable studio provided by First Star Logistics today because we have the man, Bengals offensive line coach Frank Pollock is joining us after spending time at the Combine and Coach Pollock uh, does an unbelievable job coaching up his players. Uh, they, they, the players love Frank Pollock and they love everything about him, his techniques and everything he teaches, but more importantly, they trust and respect him as a man. And that's what it's all about when you're at this level. The uh, the relationship between coach and player is extremely important, and coach is the best. Appreciate your time, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. So, Combine, Indianapolis. Spent a good part of the week up there with the big boys. I'll tell you, coach. These, these guys are genetic phenomenons. I'm looking at these big old bodies. You know, Alt's almost 6'9", but it seems like everybody's at least 6'5", 320 to 330 pounds, running, you know, as low as 4940s. And I'm watching them, uh, you know, change direction in the wave drill, as we used to call it, and, and these different drills. And I'm like, they're moving like a guy, you know, 120 pounds smaller. I mean, it is incredible to see the athleticism. And, and, and I... I don't say that lightly. I mean, these big body dudes are athletic as hell. Yeah, it's there's a few impressive guys out there as far as their movement skills and bend. It's it's don't forget the bend part. It's one thing being able to move and 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 show some foot speed and quicks laterally, but do it in a good football position with bend because you're going to be striking somebody or someone's looking to strike you. So you better be able to sit and sink your hips and and still move like that. So it's. It's not always athletes you're looking for. You're looking for linemen who are athletic. So that's a real big distinction for me is this, you know, not, not looking for track guys. There's great athletes. We're looking for linemen who are athletic. It's it's incredible. Like you say, uh, you know, it was always, I'd hear all every day from, you know, from coaches, bend at the knees, not at the waist, man. Show me the bend at the knees. You know, and you, you got to make sure that you're you're getting your, your, like you said, getting those hips down, sinking the, sinking the hips and getting in a good strike position. And I'm looking at, you know, in in sports, we've talked about this a few times, just about any athletic endeavor, feet and hands, you know, starts with the feet, ends with the hands. And I'm watching these guys, like you say, bend in in the feet. And then, man, when they strike, dude, those guys are, that bag was popping. Those bags were like popping when those guys were punching that bag. Every one of them had a hell of a punch, it looked like. Yeah, it was... uh where I was sitting there in the stands, you could hear hear a few of those pops on the bags too. I think one of one of the guys dumped <laughs> one of the coaches holding the bag. It's like tough job, hold the bag, and these guys are trying to light you up, you know, for all all the right reasons. When I think it was the Oregon center that uh, tipped over one of the guys, <laughs> and he'll do that. He's he's nasty, man. That dude will finish, yeah. won't he? Woo. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good finish. He does, man. That's a that, that the thing I'm thinking, okay, at number 18. Now, you know, there's so many, I, I can see a half a dozen offensive tackles, you know, uh, going in the first round, forget the interior part of the offensive line, the center and guards. I mean, just, just tackles, but I, but I see, you know, a handful of quarterbacks who knows how many wide receivers, who knows how many edge guys, you know, who knows how many offensive linemen, if it just falls that way, I, I think they're, could be a, a very, very good 
<laughs> prospect left at number 18 potentially. Do you see it that way or is it hard to judge obviously so early? Yeah, I mean, yeah, right now it looks that there's going to be a good chance. Um, you never know until it all unfolds and plays out. The draft's a little wild that way. I think that's why it's got so much excitement and buzz around it because of that type of aspect to it that the, the fans have really flocked to the whole process as well. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good players, a lot of good players worthy of, of being picked on, on, on day one. And, and, and like always, just a matter of how the board flushes out for 32 teams and, and all that to who ends up getting picked. So is this as deep or, a draft at offensive line as there's been in in a few years, not just at the tackle position, but overall. And does that depth, is it, you know, not just top heavy, are there guys, mid rounds, guys, late rounds, and guys that probably are going to be good foot or good football players that might not get drafted that, you know, you got to, Hey, I'd like that guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I, this is by far the most players they've had at the combine that I can recall. Oh, what 71 offensive linemen. I mean, usually it's, wow. We're, we're in the 40s, low 50s. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot. So it just speaks to where the league sees the depth and the quality of this draft class for linemen. So there's a lot of guys, a lot of guys to watch and, and grade and, and, and work through, me and Coach Frazier. And, uh, but, yeah, I'm excited to get to get into it. It's been uh, so early in the process, but uh, met with a lot of great guys at the Combine and, a lot of talented players, like you say, a lot of a lot of freakish type measurements with some of these guys with with their size, but their length, their their width, with their wingspan, it's uh, it's impressive. That that's the thing. I mean, it, it, they're they're they got so much length, uh, and I was watching a lot of them, and, and and it was always all right. Now now when you're sitting, when you're when you're you know bending those knees and getting your butt down and sit, don't don't be leaning, you know, don't don't be leaning forward. And these guys, man. They, they've been they've been coached well. I, I know you are involved in a lot of clinics and everything, uh, coaching wise in the um, in, in the profession of, of offensive line coaching. There, there's a lot of good coaching going on out there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. These guys of uh, a lot of these high end guys that I, that I've been able to eyeball a little bit more have got a lot of polish to them already. Um, so it's uh, you can pick and choose on some areas of improvement for some of those high end guys, but uh, a lot of good qualities to, to like about these guys from a technical aspect that they're uh, coming to the table with early. So it's, you see a lot of guys incorporating some traps in their protection as far as their punch is concerned. And I'm always impressed by that. And some of their independent hand use uh, working on counters. Uh, that's always been kind of fun to watch, see some of these kids that, that, already, you know, can do those types of things. So coach, uh, how about if I, if I, I'm, I'm just going to say a school name cause I'm going to butcher some of these names. I, I don't know. Yeah. 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 I'm with you there. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, it's like, who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, what, what, what's going on with some of these guys. But, um, so if I, if I give you a school name, can you, can you go through, uh, maybe some of the attributes that some of these offensive linemen, you know, have that you, that you like maybe some of the positives. Yeah. For the most part, we'll, we'll see. I'll tell you if I haven't got to him yet. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's start with alt. That's a, that's an easy one. What yeah. about alt? What, what makes alt, uh, uh, so special? What's, what's the deal with him? Well, everyone, I mean, you, you like his lineage. I mean, his dad played in the league for a really long time, was a quality player. So, you know, he was kind of, brought up early to you know what offensive line plays all about but he's he's a big man watching him run uh run around at the combine he, he's he's not tall and and thin he's he's thick um he's put together and built really well he's got tremendous feet i've been really impressed with his movement skills on tape um but uh those are the two big things that really that that jump out at me with with alt alt i mean he measured almost at six, nine coach. I'm like, what yeah. the heck, you know, 325 pounds ran almost a five flat 40. And then I think in the 20 yard, uh, you know, breakdown, or maybe it was 10, he was like second best. I mean, this, this big old long dude gets going quickly, man. It's unbelievable. He's quick twitch. Yeah. He's, he's got great movement skills and, and athleticism about him. 
So that, for sure. So how about uh, Fatanu or Fantanu out of Washington? Well, another very good athlete, great initial quicks. Um, he can really move his feet. You see that in his pass sets. Uh, he's a guy that that plays with length. Um, I think he's got decent measurable length, uh, but he uses it as well. More importantly, some guys will have great length measurably, but they don't use it as much. They're they're a little bit mired in or top heavy in their blocks. But he he uses it. He's a uh, he had a uh, a lot of good movement skills that you like about that guy. So he's uh, pretty impressive that way in space. I think he's a guy that probably has some good position flex too. If you need him to go play a couple of different positions besides just tackle, I think he can also play guard. Right. Right. All, all was a hockey star in his youth and uh, the Washington kid was a volleyball guy. I mean, he, these guys are pretty athletic, you know, it's like, all it become bigger and yeah. you know, I kind of outgrow one sport, but take some of that skill set that they learned, you know, and, yeah. and apply it to, uh, to other sports. That's always a, that's always a big deal. What about uh, Fashionu, the kid from – is that how you say his name, from Penn State? Uh, yeah, I'm I, I, I just going to go with Oli. This is the first <laughs> abbreviation of the first name. Oli will work. That will work. Yeah, yeah. He's long, tremendous length. He plays with great bend. And uh, he's a lot of fun to watch on tape. He's put on some good stuff on tape as well. He's a guy that's uh, f- shown some good independent punching on tape, really good strike with his inside hand. If he gets chopped with one, he's able to move his feet. His feet don't stop if someone gets a, gets a chop on one of his hands. But uh, he's shown some good stuff. He's been fun to watch. I think I think football is uh, – I, I won't say somewhat new. We may compare to some of these other guys uh, with his family background and his journey, but uh, a lot of a lot of fun to watch him for sure. What about Fuaga from Oregon State, man? I, I look at this guy, man. His he is he is fluid, man. He is smooth. He is silky smooth. Yeah, he he can get out on an edge real quick. He's another guy that plays with maximizing his length, and he's physical. He might be one of the nastier guys that you watch on tape. When he puts his hands on you, you're going to move. You're, he displaces guys. And uh, I don't see him ever taking plays off. He's always looking to punish somebody. And that, that's a lot of fun to watch. So he, he plays with the right mindset and finish. And uh, another guy, fun to watch. How about uh, Latham out of Alabama? Yeah, he's a huge man. Yes. And, uh, and he's – He's a pretty smooth athletic mover as well. And he, you're shocked at what he weighs because he, he carries it so well. He's, 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 he's firm. He's not loose and sloppy. He's built thick, solid across the board. He's got huge lower bodies from hips and thighs. I mean, it's just powerful, a lot of power. And then he puts his hands on you. Another guy, he's going dis- to, he's going to displace you. So, and he's excellent in pass pro. He's done really well as far as using his length, covering up, getting to the spot, and and able to move his feet as well. He might not be as athletic as some of these other guys, but but he's athletic enough, and he's put a lot of good stuff on tape. He's been fun to watch. You make a great point about, uh, you know, not being loose. You know, these guys, you think 330, 335 pounds, whatever, when they run, they're going to be like jelly. You know, it's going to be shaking everywhere. These right. guys are, man, they're, they're stacked. They're firm. They, yeah. I mean, they're put yeah. together. It's like, it's like watching a massive linebacker run or a big tight end or something, man. It's like, yeah. these guys are just put together, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. It's real impressive. So, uh, Guyton who now Alt was a tight end initially Guyton, a tight end initially mm-hmm. out of uh, Oklahoma. I mean, these guys convert to the tackle position you'd expect some athleticism there. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah. Great length. Um, the guy who's still learning the craft, you can see that on tape, but he, he's a guy that, uh, moves really well. And I tell you, he, watching his game tape and then, uh, then watching how he did in the senior bowl week and practices, I, I was more impressed with what he was able to do at the senior bowl going against some of the better rushers, you know, 
in practice and and the, and the one-on-one drills, it really is like, wow. So it, it, I was more impressed watching that tape even. Oh. So he's, uh, he's got a lot of good stuff to him and, uh, still working my way through him as well, but he's, uh, you know, a lot of, lot, lot of talented guy, like you said, former tight end. So he's, he's got some movement skills to him to play out there on the edge in space that, uh, you're going to have to, especially in this, at this level against the guys you're going to be seeing. So what about Mims out of Georgia coach? He's, he fits in that freak category. Like that's, they shouldn't make human beings that, that size that can move like him. He's, he's insane. He's maybe a little bit limited as far as playing experience. So it's, yeah, all his best football is all still, still to come and ahead of him. But, uh, like Munoz. Yeah. I mean, he was <laughs> hurt. He was a hurt, hurt a lot at SC. This kid had some injury issues. I mean, it, it, man, if the, if the football gods say we're going to leave you alone, you're going to be healthy. Woo. Yeah. He is, he is everything length, width. I mean, height, weight. He's another guy. There's no way if you told me what he weighed. It, I was like, there's no way. I mean, I, I, I mean, crazy act, like you said, is, is a great word. It's, it's, it's insane. Hand size. I mean, just humongous hands. And and, and I mean, he ran like a 5 0 something in the field. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Like, how, how's that possible? I, mean, I know. I know. What the heck, man? These guys, it's, it's like, <sighs> I mean, you, you got you got monsters running. There were like I think three or four sub five flats. There were a bunch that were like 5.02, 5.04, 5.04. Mm-hmm. It's like just monsters, just behemoths, man. It was it was impressive. It was unbelievable. What about uh, the kid from BYU? I'm not even going to try his last name, but uh, yeah, um, Kingsley. Is yeah, his first, name. His first name. Yeah, yeah Kingsley. Yeah. yeah. He was fun to watch uh, as well. He's he's more more of a thicker power type guy. Um, maybe not as athletic as some of these higher end guys that we've yeah. talked about, but uh, he's a quality player. Um, I think he's a, he's a guy that might give you some position flex too at tackle and guard. But uh, he was impressive. He did did a lot of good things. Still early on on my tape eval with him as well, but. Um, he, he did some good things at the combine. Looks solid, like you said. Another guy that's a, a bigger man, but but not not loose or sloppy. He's put together well as well. So uh, Barton, the kid from Duke, versatile guy. Uh, is his da- related to Harris? No, 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 no. He uh, he's a guy that played center his freshman year. Yeah. Started a lot of games at center, then found his way out at tackle. So that speaks to his athleticism and being able to play in space. Um, his he's ability of, to obviously run the show. He's out of Duke. Smart guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, so he's a nonstop high effort motor guy. He, he can he can play at the second level. Uh, so he, he was he was fun to watch. He's got obviously a lot of position flex, probably with his length, as far as where that measures in at. It's kind of probably his best long term position is probably going to be inside, even though he was a college tackle there at the end of his career. So go back down where he started at, right. center or guard, you know. What about uh, Morgan out of Arizona? Yeah, another athletic guy. Yeah. Uh, grew up in Arizona. So I always have a. Uh, an affection for those Arizona guys being one myself. So there you go. But uh, he's he's an, he's kind of uh, built a little similar. Uh, I'm going to say to all just really tall guy and athletic, uh, kind of similar in play. Um, but he he was he's been fun to watch as well. Another talented guy that that may find himself somewhere in that day one range as, to, as well, worthy of the discussion all these other guys uh but yeah you know still early am i working my way through him as well okay garrett greenfield 38 inch vertical jump set a record i mean six five over 310 somewhere between 310 and 315 out of south dakota state you know small school but this dude i mean he showed some ability to some athletic ability obviously yeah, I haven't watched him on tape yet, but obviously at the combine workout, all of his numbers that he put up at the combine workout were impressive. Right. He's at the high end of all that stuff. Uh, 
as far as his uh, athleticism and how he jumped and how he ran the shuttle and whatnot. So he, he, he did well. He definitely has helped himself coming from a small school as well. So I'm kind of looking forward to watching his tape when I eventually get to him. One of my favorite guys, Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. Nasty. Finish you, man. He'll, like, finish you and laugh at you, it looks like. I mean, he seems to be one of those guys. Yeah, he. you could see his passion on tape for sure. He, uh, he'll he he'll give you some fist pumps. His play demeanor kind of reminds me a little bit of Karras, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll give you yeah. some, some fist pumps after a good block or they score a touchdown and run, run it up the middle, you know, right off of him somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's a guy that uh, – probably give you some good position flex center guard and eventually settle on a starting center somewhere in the league as well. But uh good player. He's been fun to watch. Let me uh, hit on a guard out of Kansas state Cooper BB. He's a pretty versatile kid too, isn't he? Yeah. I haven't watched a ton on him. Um, but uh, he's a guy that uh, has been mentioned a lot. Um, heard a, uh, Heard a lot of good things. He, he generated a lot of buzz at the combine from a number of people about that kid. But uh, I've not watched tape on him yet. But, uh, but yeah, he's a guy that uh, was getting spoken about a lot at the last last week at the combine. So, coach, for soon, uh, free agency starts, and you've got one that uh, that you think highly of, and uh, you've coached him up and drafted him, Jonah Williams. I mean, he's Done a heck of a job for the Cincinnati Bengals. Will he be a Bengal? Will he be elsewhere? Looks like he's going to be hitting free agency. There's going to be other guys out there in free agency. How do you balance your attention to free agency, the combine, with the draft coming up, pro day visits? I mean, man, your eyes your eyes become like a couple of projectors, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you just sit down in front of the film and just go. I mean, uh, Duke and, and his crew, they, they do a great job and free agency and kind of if I need to watch some guys they, they've kind of funneled that down to a list that, you know watch these these guys and then give us how you stack them and see them kind of a thing they, they, they've always done a great job and so it's just you're just constantly watching the college guys from here all the way up through the end and, and then you when you get hit up on free agency to put the college guys on pause and go hit those free agents that are coming through our way to go look at and whatnot and add to the list or you just what you do is that where it's at that, that time of year right now you know and I, I do we've talked about this before i mean i just think the bengals are wise you know i get a guy like frank pollock who understands every single nuance to be understood about offensive linemen and offensive line play you have that type of resource tap into it you know i mean it's like why separate coach's input from the personnel scouting input. I mean, it makes so much sense to me to have a collaborative effort there. And like you said, you're working in concert with, and here's some guys, we want your opinion on these guys. To me, you're the guy that's going to be living with them every day, working with them every day, you know, developing them every day. It just makes so much sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you can you can say we're just a microcosm of just another team as part of the overall team, right? I mean, it's just, you know, everything, you got better success, I think, if you collaborate and, and have a bunch of uh, talented people adding to the final piece of the puzzle, if you will. So that, I think our, I think we do a pretty good job in that, in that regard. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of that here at the Bengals, for sure. And the other part of what you're doing is you're run game coordinator. So I'm, I'm sure not, not only just run game, I mean, you'll be doing protection things and everything else with the, you know, the passing game, but from a run game coordinator standpoint, you're okay. I liked, I like this and I'm not as keen on that. Maybe try it from this formation, this motion, this look, whatever, uh, maybe try to block it a different, a little bit different pattern. Uh, all that is part of your process now in the off season as well. You have to squeeze that in, right? Yeah, we, we, we had some good, uh, some staff meetings and, and doing some self scout stuff. And, and, uh, and then we kind of divvied up some league wide studies on, on like the top study, of the top three teams on tight zone. What were they doing? 
you know, whatever it was formationally, schematically, maybe like you mentioned, maybe it was just a certain motions that they were using uh, to run a certain concept in that realm, if you will, something we could, we could utilize that we weren't doing or, you know, add to what we're doing. So, and we're all, like, I'm always asking guys, what do you think about this? Whether it's the tight end coach, you, you feel good about, your guys doing this? Yeah, you, you have any thought on that? This is where I'm kind of headed. You know, same with the receivers. As a receivers coach, you know, so we're, we we collaborate in that regards as well throughout the game planning process, and you know, so it's you, you want them to feel good about what I'm coming up with to ask their guys to do and execute. You know, if it's something maybe game planish. Um, obviously, we have our bread and butter stuff that we're going to always do weekly. In and out, and we're we always like to add to that and expand on that, and maybe trim some of that from from last year that wasn't so good, and add and build build out to some of that stuff that was. So it's just your normal process of the off season. As we right now, we're really focused on the personnel side, and and then we'll kind of pick back up on that other stuff once the draft is is complete. And finally, coach, a big part of what you've uh, been able to accomplish. I mean, you as a player, a great player. You had a great mind for football. You understood football at a very high level. Um, and, and your coaches respected that and trusted that in you. And you do the same thing with your guy. You, 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 you make sure you get guys that have some football IQ to them, can understand what you're trying to get across and maybe position versatility as a result of that. Um, and is that a big part of the process? I don't know how much time you get to do that, you know, at the combine necessarily, but you do have some – one-on-one -on -one meetings is it is it a little bit get them up on a board a little bit find out about just one-on-one -on -one conversations about what they think about football their love for football their understanding for football that's going to be a big part of the process in your evaluation isn't it because you got a hell of a room in that regard yeah i mean first off i was not a great player i hung on by a pinky <laughs> you were a great player yeah right no I, 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 I hung on i hung on for a little eight-year career <laughs> but, that's that's but, awesome yeah. that's great but I'll do zoom meetings with guys or if I go out to go visit someone in person, that's always has to be classroom oriented. That to me is even more important than watching them run around their underwear. I mean, I, I mean, right. old linemen do not play the game in their underwear. I mean, you're constantly hitting somebody on every play. So the best evaluation is the tape, but if you go out to meet them in person, it's got to involve the classroom or I'm, I'm zooming guys. Now with this great internet stuff, you can do these Zoom meetings and, and get them on the board that way. Um, it's so important that they have some football IQ so they can comprehend and, and build on that when they get in, and start learning the, you know, a pro playbook and what, what we're trying to do. So it's um, to adapt and to adjust. And so you're just looking to see, well, how do they learn? Can they learn? How do they learn? And, and then what is their base knowledge and understanding from the game and so it's not it just you know helps with the learning curve and and their 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 process and their developmental curve as far as from a mental standpoint and you know that's that's big so and, and that's going to fluctuate at each position i mean the closer you get to the ball the the, the faster you got to process the, the higher uh football iq you have to have because it's just the the picture changes more it's a lot faster. You've got way more adjustments. So from the, the closer you get down to the ball, it's just the nature of football. So no doubt, no doubt. Coach, appreciate it. I mean, I, I, you know, Joe Burrow is always very effusive in his praise about your offensive line and Jake Browning was as well. I mean, I've had him on a couple of podcasts and he always talks about how the big boys up front gave him the opportunity to do what he needed to do. And he did it well, but without those guys, he knows he wasn't going to be able to do it. And that's that's what it's all about. That's why football is the greatest team sport there is, Coach. 22 moving parts. Love it. I know you love it. You're the best. Appreciate your time. And uh, go unearth a couple of uh, some studs, some some Pro Bowls in the making, man, some, some dominant O-linemen in the making. It doesn't have to be first round, Coach. And I know you're great at developing those guys. You're going to find something. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it'll be fun. I uh, appreciate you having me on. You're the best, sir. Thanks for your time. You bet. Thanks, Lap.
Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.